My name's Az. <laughs> Start with that, hey. Uh, I'm the youth pastor here at Bright Church. Um, it's an honour to be in the room with you tonight. Today, I'm used to saying tonight because I'm used to used to ministering on Friday nights. So, um, yeah, it's it's lovely to be here this morning. Um, man, God is so good, isn't He? Wow, well, what a precious moment we just shared together. I, I don't know. He was definitely touching my soul. I hope He was touching yours. Um, God is God is doing such a beautiful thing in our youth ministry at the moment. Um, you know, we just love seeing our kids just pour in on Friday nights and just come and, and just, you know, receive what he has for them and, and to go out and to, you know, touch the lives of their friends through the power of the Holy Spirit that's working in them. Um, I love our youth. <laughs> I do. Um, I, I don't just say that because, you know, Nikki and myself get the honour of being the youth pastors here, my wife Nikki, but um, I say that because I genuinely have a burning heart <laughs> for young people. Like, I think that there's something on this generation of kids uh, that that is is far not not more significant than any other generation but I think he's positioned them specifically for something that he wants to work out in the next you know 10 to 20 years and in their lifetime um so it is it's an honor to be able to to shepherd that and um yeah I just I always pray that I'm surrendered enough to be able to to take that weight um I've never felt more disqualified to do things in my life to be honest but I think that's the space in which God likes to work in actually um, is actually the, the, the recognition of your disqualification, <laughs> the recognition that in your flesh you can't actually do anything without Jesus. That's where the Spirit comes in. I love what Jesus says um, when he's in the Garden of Gethsemane before he's about to go to the cross. And he says, um, the Spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. <laughs> that this, His Spirit in that moment so badly and desperately wanted to do what his father had ordained him to do but he knew that his flesh was not wanting it and and I, I feel that sometimes so much um that yeah that there, there is opportunities where I, it can easily just throw down the responsibilities that you've got um easily just quit just pack up and leave um or, or that's the flesh <laughs> or you could lean into what God actually wants you to do and take that that responsibility and, and carry across we're, we're talking about identity in our youth ministry at the moment and um, we've had some amazing discussions and, and some amazing uh, moments talking about, you know, the, the deeper things of the heart and the deeper things that youth go through and struggle with. Um, and through this, I think accidentally, we're, we're sort of teaching them a concept um, that I want to talk about today, which is, which is picking up your cross and following Jesus. <laughs> through this, uh, 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 there's a teaching of, of laying down your life, of, of, of denying yourself. And uh, if you want to move with me today to, to Matthew 16, 24, I, I want to read a verse where Jesus talks about this. Um, and and what, whatever I preach today, I, I want you to continue to come back to this verse. Um, remember that everything that is said, it, it all comes back to this that Jesus is talking about. He says this, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? The first thing that Jesus says there is before taking up your cross is, is denying yourself. Denying yourself. What is denying yourself? It's, it's essentially uh, perhaps the, the flesh, the things that you uh, maybe really want to do and you desire and maybe you want to chase after that are out of alignment of the will of God for your life that you need to hand over to him. And, and lay down. And that's, that's a hard thing to do. We've all got dreams. We've all got visions. We've all got hopes for the future. But before we do anything for Jesus, he first wants us to deny the things of our flesh and of our heart. And the hope within that from God is that you recognize that what you're laying down as you have a transformative relationship with him is not actually uh, the things that you really want. Because when you pick up your cross and when you follow him, he actually reveals the desires of your heart. You know, we, we see it a lot if, if, if you're in here today and you've been transformed by the power of the gospel and given your heart to Jesus after perhaps 20, 30, 40 years of not following him, you recognize the things that I used to enjoy and desire are actually the things I don't really want to desire anymore because I've got a life with Jesus. It's a beautiful thing. Um, when, when I fell out of love with God and, 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 and moved away from him when I was leaving school and, and, and doing my own thing, there were things that I desired like partying and drinking, all that stuff that, that I just have no 
time for anymore. Like, I could not care less about um, what clubs open on a Saturday night. <laughs> I used to, but not anymore. It's not the desire of my heart. The desire of my heart is that young people would get saved and set free and encounter the same God that I did. <laughs> and so I want to encourage you guys today, the first thing you do before you chase after anything is deny yourself. It is lay those things down. Why do we lay it down? We lay it down so we have the capacity to pick up a cross. Imagine you're holding all this stuff, all these desires, and you just throw it away to Jesus. And you say, I don't know what's next, but I'm picking up this cross because you're worth it. We're so desperate to find our purpose, our calling, our future, that we've forgotten that our goal actually shouldn't, in life, shouldn't be a thing. It shouldn't be a position. It shouldn't be a platform. It shouldn't be a calling. It should just be a person. And that person's Jesus. That should be the greatest desire of our heart. Um, and and that, that is, that is a, a, a tough thing to do when there's so many distractions around. I recognize that. But remember this verse, deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. We had uh, recently last week, last Friday, not the one that just went, the one before that, uh, we had our, our, our first live night back for the term at youth. So we praise and worship. Um, it's an honor to be able to preach on, on identity and, and we went head first into that. Um, and as we got to the crux of the message, um, I, I just wanted to encourage the youth. There was an opportunity to respond to Jesus at the altar, to, to kneel before the throne of God and to basically deny themselves the things that they think they've built up as their identity with who they are that is misaligned with who God says they are so that they can come to the front, receive from God and be aligned to his will, to receive fresh identity. And um, it was such a powerful moment. But in the build up to it, I... I could sense God was like, you need to kneel at the altar as well. Like, this is, you, you, can't, you can't tell your youth to go where you're not willing to go. And I knew that there were things I built up in my own identity that were not aligned with God's will. Um, it's so easy. I find, it, I find it really challenging to not make this um, a part of my identity. It's just a struggle that I have. I have to continually, daily lay that down. And so in that moment, um, <laughs> I was like, look, guys, um, I want you to respond, but uh, I'm going to do it too. And it was so freeing. <laughs> and I, as I opened my eyes and looked around, I was like, man, that heart, like uh, nearly all our youth are at this altar right now. What a, what a precious moment that is to be. And it was. It was like a freeing moment of denying. And it was seeing a generation actually deny themselves and pick up their cross. What we find in these moments when we lay down our lives, uh, when we surrender and when we pick up our cross, is that the cross can actually be quite heavy. There's actually a weight yeah. that comes with it. And so that's my first point for today is a cross that's worth carrying. It's actually quite heavy. Now, now when Jesus talks about pick up your cross, he's, he's actually referring to what he would end up doing when he would go to the cross and die, die on the cross for our sins. It's, it's carrying part of the cross that would lead from where you've been brutally tortured in, in the process of a crucifixion to then carrying it up a hill to where you would die on a hill. So for Jesus... He would, it was, uh, uh, the cross that he would carry was just a portion of it, just one, just the, the horizontal side of it. And they say that it would weigh around 45 kilos. And then he would carry that, what, they be, what um, theolog- theologians believe to be around 800 metres to get from where he was to the cross. 45 kilos, 800 metres after having like ribbons of flesh torn off you, after being spat on, after being beaten, after having uh, a crown of thorns pushed into your head, all of that... And then you have to carry 45 kilos up 800, 800 meter hill. That's a lot. That's heavy. That's weight, yeah? That's weight. So, so let's recognize that when we start to feel the weight. Our, our Christ, our Savior, our King took that weight. Therefore, when we feel the pressure of our own cross, that should actually encourage us to be able to carry that weight. I love, I love that anyone who does anything in the Bible that is of glory to God had a heavy cross. <laughs> they had something that was just, oh, responsibility. And you may be in here today and you may feel that responsibility. Maybe it's for your family. Uh, maybe it's for your friends. Maybe it's, it's, it's for your workplace, whatever it is. Maybe it's for your ministry. You may feel that weight. But God is, is, is encouraging you today that the heaviness is actually part of the journey and it's a joy. It actually should be a joy. If you turn with me to Exodus 4 verse 10, um, we, we, we read about Moses after he's just encountered the burning bush. God has commissioned him to, um, to, to bring the Israelites who are in captivity in Egypt 
out of Egypt and into the promised land. Um, Zach and I, I feel like every Tuesday we, when we talk about the Bible, it, it, Pastor Zach, uh, Zach, oh, Zach, not Pastor Zach, sorry. Uh, or maybe, maybe, who knows? Uh, Zach's our business manager here, by the way. He's an absolute legend. He does have a beautiful pastoral heart and he loves the word. And we always, I feel like our conversation always turns to just Exodus and Moses. <laughs> we're like, how good is the Prince of Egypt? And we're like, yeah, it's a great movie. Um, and... <laughs> And then we talk about just how amazing Moses is because he's honestly one of the the most amazing characters of the Bible because he had the weight of a nation on his shoulders, but he knew how to carry it. But listen to what he says here in verse 10. Moses said to the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent either in the past or since you have spoken to your servant, but I am of slow speech and of tongue. He recognized that God had commissioned him to carry the weight of a nation out of captivity and into a promised land, but he knew, God, I have a stutter, I have a speech impediment. How am I meant to lead hundreds of thousands of people out of captivity into a promised land if I can't even speak right? In that moment, when God commissioned him, when Moses, uh, as he encountered the burning bush, took off his sandals, denied himself, he felt the weight of the cross that God put on him. He felt the weight of the responsibility. But he had a moment, he had an opportunity in that moment to decide whether he was going to throw the cross away or whether he was going to take that weight and trust in God. And I tell you what, lucky he did, because I don't know whether we'd be all here today. (laughs) He decided, you know what, I'm going to pick up my cross and I'm going to follow Yahweh. I'm going to follow Lord. I'm going to follow God. God commissioned Moses to carry a cross that he was not strong enough to carry in his own strength. God knew that this is a lot of weight, but you're going to have to rely on me to be able to carry it. And that's what God is wanting to say to all of us today, that there is a cross that you have to carry when you deny yourself, but he is there to help carry that weight for you. He is there to help shepherd you and guide you along, that you're not alone. It's deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow me. There's someone there that is leading you, that is guiding you while you carry your cross. Is this good today, church? Come on. And it is, it's hard. I'm not dismissing the fact that there is not, the heaviness is not, difficult it's real hard it's like you carry on like you know your legs are just like bending at the way and you feel the crushing you feel the squeezing and this is the part where we can give up we can throw the cross away say it's not for me it's not my responsibility I don't want to do this anymore I want to quit but you got yourself into that position by denying yourself in the first place what do I mean by that in order to pick up a cross you must first deny yourself we all love those moments. We just, we just experience one. We're all worshiping God. We sense his presence. God, I'll give you everything. I'll give you my all. Take me anywhere. Here I am, Lord. Send me. And then he sends us for something. He puts the cross on us. He, he gives us that weight and immediately we're like, we don't want this anymore. We put ourselves in that situation by asking him into our life, by asking, uh, asking him, Lord, I want responsibility. I want to go where you want me to go. And then suddenly when the weight gets a bit too heavy, we don't want the cross anymore. I can't tell you how many times over the past 18 months as uh, Nikki and myself as youth passes over this place, how much we love being here, but the amount of times where we've come out of a Friday night and we're just like, are we even meant to be doing this? This weight is so much. This kid's running rampant. They're running off. They're doing crazy things. God bless them, but they're tough work. (laughs) Where are the parents? No, 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 no. It is hard work. And I know for, for some of you, I mean, if you're a parent in the building, I know, I mean, I've only got a one-year-old, but she's been tough work sometimes too. That's a cross that is heavy. <laughs> I can't imagine how much harder it gets. Uh, please, Lord, no. Um, <laughs> but we don't, we almost get ourselves into these spiritual encounters and we're like, yes, God, oh, we'll go to the nations. And then God's like, all right, go to the nations. And you're like, well, nah, well, I've got things to tend to at home here. I got, we don't want to carry that weight. But the beautiful thing about Jesus is that he's saying, hey, it's not yours to actually carry fully. Jesus actually says, I want to take that weight. I want to to help you out with it. I want to actually help carry that cross with you because I did so physically 2,000 years ago. That means I can do it with you spiritually now. So let's go to Matthew 11, 28, 30. This is a beautiful verse that Jesus uh, is is speaking. Right now, let's go. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke 
upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Verse 30, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The, the, the weight of being a disciple of Christ is easy and the burden is light. He's not saying there that it's not heavy, but he's saying that, that when you partner with him, there is a lightness that comes with carrying a heaviness. It's almost counter. It's, it's, it's like a paradox. But that is the, that is the kingdom of God. There, there are things that don't make sense sometimes. But, but when you get deep into it, you're actually like, no, that makes sense. It is a heavy weight. But with Christ, it somehow becomes light. It's, it's a beautiful thing. And I love how he says, I'm, I'm coming to you low, lowly and gentle. Gentle and lowly. What does that mean? It means it requires humility. To actually, to actually be carrying your cross and trusting in Jesus, you must be humble. And this is where sometimes control can set in. Where, where, we, where we've got that cross and it's ours and it's ours alone. And then we, we begin to complain. This is a lot of weight. And then we begin to talk to people. This is, oh, man, uh, yeah, my cross. <laughs> you should see this cross. I'm, oh, man, it's so heavy. Oh, man, I've got so many burdens. Oh, man, oh, my responsibilities, they're ever. Oh, just I wish someone would come and help me out. And then we begin to sort of control it but complain about it. We're kind of like, we're going to hold on to this, but I want everybody to know how heavy it is. That's not humility. That's not humility at all. To actually help, to actually allow Jesus to come and help you with that burden, it requires humility saying, God, I know that you've given me this responsibility right now, but I trust that you are going to come in here right now. I want to hand everything over to you and I'm going to trust that you will help carry my cross. Uh, the amount of times that we've wanted to control things in the youth ministry and we've wanted to do, well, why, did, why can't I be like this? Why can't I be like that? And God's saying, sometimes it's not time for that yet. Just trust in me. Yeah. Man, there's so many amazing youth that we have. I love them. I, I love our youth to bits. But there are moments where they come in and I'm like, can you just not be like that? <laughs> can, you just, can you just not talk that way? Can you just not do that thing that you are distracting everybody in? Can you, not, can you allow me to minister right now? Can you allow me to preach? Jeez, they're sometimes just talking in the middle of preaching. And I'm like, please, hand it over to God. It's not about me in the moment. Because the beautiful thing is they're actually willing to just be here on a Friday night and step into the presence of God. So I need to hand over that trust. Amen. A cross is our responsibility, but it's God's joy to help ease that load. This doesn't minimize the heaviness. I don't want to downplay what you guys are going through right now, what we're all going through. If we're going through hardship, I know money's, money's tight at the moment. Like we, we all feel that, that pressure. Uh, you know, there's, it's the winter blues at the moment. Ministry can be harder in winter sometimes as well. Getting to church can be tough. You just want to lay up snuggled in bed. Uh, I don't want to minimize that, but I do want to encourage you that God is willing to take that heaviness. Don't just drop the cross because it's heavy, guys. Transfer the weight by trusting in the Lord. We had a beautiful, beautiful, uh, bright youth camp at the start of the year. It was absolutely amazing. Um, but it wasn't amazing at first. <laughs> it was hard at first. Uh, we got to the campsite in Anglesey, uh, and there was just opposition from the get-go. Um, we get there. Um, Ash, our amazing worship director for youth, was just crushing the setup, but she was also saying to me at the same time, as there is a lot to do, and I don't know whether we've got time to open at 7 p.m. I'm like, that's all right, sister. I trust in you. In Jesus' name, you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, Ash is actually amazing. We love her to bits. She's, she's incredible. Um, and she did a really good job. But um, then we, we saw one of our leaders uh, in the corner looking a bit green, looking a bit grey. And I got to, to one of our other leaders. I'm like, is he okay? He's like, oh, he's not feeling well. And um, yeah, there's some, some bad bowel movements at the moment. And I thought, <laughs> Get him out of here. <laughs> I've heard stories of camps where gastro has outbreak. Has, has broken out and uh, we did not want that at our camp we wanted the holy spirit not the Ugh. so yeah we weren't going to allow that so we had to then push him away so we're down a leader uh, i've already got another couple of leaders away because of other camps and things like that that are on at the same time so we are now shortchanged. i then get a call up from pastor nick and shanali who were stuck they were going to minister they are young adults pastors they were going to minister on the saturday they were stuck up in cans and they're like as we are not going to make it so i'm like that's just another bit of heaviness all good god is good bless the Lord on my soul, it's going to be fine. <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then we had one of our youth come up to us. Is he in this service, Ethan? No. Nah. He came up, and he's covering his mouth, and he's like, oh, Pastor Raz, Pastor Raz, oh, there's something. Uh, uh. And he reveals a tooth that's fallen out and blood just gushing out of his mouth. We had a game on at the Oval at the time. That all this stuff was happening literally in the space of five minutes. 
and he uh, had eaten a wheat bick, a wheat bick, not a wheat bix, and it crushed his like tooth, and it was just gushing out. So I was like, M Bachelor, praise God for her. She is a paramedic. She was there, and I was like, M, go again. <laughs> And I was like, God is good. God is good. God is good. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. We then get to the campsite. Like, we can go up, up to where the camp is, where the food, uh, food grounds are. Jacob sort of gives me a bit of a... Jacob Jones, one of our leaders. Is Jacob here today? No, he's not. He's amazing. Tall guy. You can't miss him. He's, uh, he's in charge of the food. And uh, he looks at me and he's like, as we've we got like these two, three hundred sausages here, bro. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, sweet, can't wait. Yeah, dinner's about half an hour away, but um, it's not half an hour away because only one of the burners works on the barbecue. This is a four burner barbecue, guys. This is a campsite we paid money for, guys. You guys pay, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're not going there again. Please sign up next year. And I was like, are you kidding me? And he's like, yeah, this is going to take ages. I'm like, all right, I just need to pull myself out of this moment because I was like, this is compounding the weight is starting to get a lot heavier. And I step into my room and, and my wife Nikki is there with my, my little, she was probably, what, six months old at the time, Gia. Gia's just chilling there at the back. Don't look at her. No. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she, was, she, was, she was just helping Gia out and I just told Nikki everything that had happened and I said, I'm not qualified for this. I said, I'm not qualified for this. This is not what I signed up for. This is not what I asked to be when I was a youth pastor. I thought it was going to be all fun and games. Uh, I thought the Holy Spirit was going to break out. There'd be a revival. We'd have 500 kids in this youth and we'd have like 10 other youth pastors with me at this time. I didn't think that. But, <laughs> but I did, genuinely did not believe that I was like, this. I'm not qualified for this. This is too much pressure for me right now. Nikki calmed me down and, and, and she was like, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. Not before Jacob Jones knocks on the door again, just... And he sheepishly opens the door he's like, Leans in, he's like, hey, Az. I'm like, yeah, bro. Can't you see what I'm about to pray? <laughs> he's like, oh, there's something really important. I'm like, oh, what is it, Jacob? And he's like, oh, one of our youth, they uh, overheard a couple of new youth that we haven't had before. They're a bit naughty. They're planning on sneaking in alcohol into the camp. And I was like, that's it. <laughs> Thank you, Jacob, for this awesome information. Peace be with you. <laughs> uh, I cracked it. Uh, Nikki, Nikki can vouch. I was like, this, I'm like, we're going home. <laughs> I'm like, we're going home. These kids can fend for themselves. They want to sneak in alcohol. Some of them were talking about going down to the pub in Anglesey. I'm like, you're 12 years old. That's not going to happen. I love, I, like, uh, God bless them. I'll get to why they're amazing in a second. <laughs> Nikki's like, Nikki, honestly, if, if I'm ever having a bad day, just forward me on to my wife because <laughs> she just calms me down in an instant. She's just like, Az, calm down. Just get over yourself. You're, you're overreacting. You think it's about you right now. It's not. Go down to the auditorium and just spend time with the Lord. And I'm like, I don't want to spend time with the Lord. Like <laughs> and so we go down to the auditorium. Um, uh, our guest speaker, Pat Steele, lovely man of God, mighty man of faith, is down there. He's been, he's just, he, wouldn't, he didn't know anything that was going on in the background. He was just doing laps of the auditorium, just praying with his shoes off and dancing. And he's a funny guy. And he, he comes up to me and he can, see, he can see that I'm a bit, I think I'm a bit frustrated. I'm like, yeah, God, you're good. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> praise your name. Oh, yeah, God. Uh, trying to speak in tongues, but it's like, no, nah, it's not working. And he's just, he puts his hand on my shoulder and he's a tall guy. So I'm like, and he wipes some tears from his eyes and he's like, the Lord's here, bro. <laughs> and I felt the weight of God's presence in that moment. The only logical thing for me to do was just to fall on my knees and just repent. <laughs> just hand over everything that I was saying out of frustration. I was a wreck. And that night, God did move. The Lord was there. We were worshipping for hours and hours on end and kids were touched by the, the hand of God in, in crazy ways. And the beautiful thing about that as well is that those kids that were trying to sneak in alcohol gave their life to Jesus that night. <laughs> and they still go to our youth and we love them to bits. And they are amazing and they're in the process of being transformed by Jesus. There's always little bumps on the road. But what I recognise in that moment is that there were so many temptations to drop that cross. 
There were so many temptation moments to drop the cross, to drop the weight, to leave, to ditch, to be like, you guys are on your own. But the, God was saying, no, 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 pick up your cross. Deny yourself. Follow me. You've got this. And the temptation was at times to pick up another cross. The temptation was to be like, you know, I can just quit this youth pastor role. I can find something else to do. It'll be fine. And you know what? That They'll forget about me. It's all good. The temptation will always be there to drop your cross and pick, some, pick another one up. But the thing about the cross that Jesus has given you is it's specifically for you. It's specifically ordained for you. He's given that to you, that specific weight, because he knows the weight that you can handle in order to trust in him. And so my second point for today is that some crosses shouldn't be carried. You see, the cross that Jesus gives you should be carried. The one that you, 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 get, you pick up when you deny yourself, that needs to be carried. But ones where we think, think it could be for us, but it's never been handed over to by Jesus because you've never denied yourself, or you haven't come in humbly, they should not be carried. A lifestyle of, 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 of pleasing man, a lifestyle of, of, of carrying the wrong cross, it's going to miss the mark. If the cross isn't for you, don't pick it up. If Jesus hasn't handed that responsibility over to you, it hasn't been ordained by him, don't pick it up. It's not for you. What does it say in verse 26 of Matthew, of Matthew 16? What will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? If you gain everything the world has to give to you, but you've sold your soul in the process of it and you've picked up the wrong cross, the cross of pleasure, the cross of of work, the cross of grief, the cross of identity, not the cross of Christ, you you, you forfeited your soul just to gain the world. And we see people um, even even all throughout the world, throughout church as well, that will um, pick up the wrong cross thinking that maybe Jesus is in it. What I mean by that is that there's people that, We can come to church at times, tick the box of church and then go home and just get on with our life and we pick up that across thinking that we're a Christian. When in reality, we've never denied ourselves. When in reality, we've never actually humbly received what God has to give for us. But we just tick that box saying, you know what, I'm a Christian, I go to church, but we've never actually, we're not living that day-to-day lifestyle with Jesus. On the other end of the spectrum, there can be people that that just want to memorize scripture and just want to be so filled with knowledge I know everything, I know it all, but have no actual deep, intimate relationship with Jesus. And they think that that's a cross to carry. It's not. And, and, and you might be saying this, like saying, is this, a bit, is this a bit counter to what you were just preaching? No, because the cross is less about what you're carrying and it's more about who you're following. It's less about the, 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 the responsibilities that he's giving you and it's more about whether or not you're chasing after Jesus with that cross. Is this making sense today? If Jesus isn't in it, why, why carry it? <laughs> Like if he's not, if he is not the one that is, is, is giving you the opportunity and the responsibility, do you really want to step into spaces that he hasn't ordained for you? That cross to carry is the one that he's depo- deposited for you. Don't carry a cross that isn't yours. It's less about what you do and it's more about intimacy with Jesus. See, when Moses um, took the Israelites out of Egypt, um, what was the thing that, that, that God was saying to him? It's let my people go so that they can worship me, so that they can worship me. The cross that he had to carry wasn't actually just to get the Israelites out of Egypt. It was so they could be intimate with the Lord. It's so that they could be one with God, so that they could worship God. So your cross carrying should actually be leading you closer to Jesus through the pressing, through the crushing, through the squeezing. That is not meant to back you into a corner where you want to drop the cross, but back you into a corner where you want to spend time with Jesus. Because you desperately need him. So you, because you desperately want to worship him. Moses understood that well. So the minute they got, out of, uh, they got out of Egypt, what did he do? He was going straight to the mountain. They were building a tabernacle. They were, they were wanting, he was like, I'm just all for worshiping God. And he never got to the promised land. He never got to see the fruit of the seeds that he planted. Why? He didn't care because he knew that all that his responsibility was, was to carry the cross God had given to him so that he could be in deep, intimate relationship with the Lord. And hopefully, hopefully, the people that were uh, being led by him would be led to Jesus in the process too, or led to God in the process. And sometimes I think we carry the wrong cross because we, we, we carry maybe the cross of the preacher or we carry the cross of the pastor when we sit here and we receive a message thinking that that is somehow Christian life. Ben can preach a fire word every single Sunday, but if you're not activating that in your own life, and you're not reading the scriptures and actually praying to God, spending time on your own, you could just be actually carrying a cross that he's worked really hard for and he carries every day, thinking that it's yours, but it's not. 
don't, don't substitute good sermons for Bible time or time with the Lord. It's good sermons are great. They're amazing. We come here to commune, to get fed, but this should be encouraging us to step out in faith when we go home, when we go to our workplace, so that we can actually be encouraged to pick up our own cross. Does that make sense, guys? We see this all the time in our youth ministry where we, we get a lot of young kids that come in and the first time that they encounter God could be here on a Friday night and a leader will pray for them, they'll encounter God, then they'll go out and they probably won't activate it, but then they'll come back next Friday, have the same issues, can I get prayer again? Yeah, we love you, we'll pray for you. And so our youth continue to come to the altar and receive prayer and they begin to maybe have a mindset where they think that they're receiving not from God but from a leader in specific. That's not, a cro- that's not the right cross to carry. We have to shift, so we have to slowly disciple them and shift them into a perspective where it's like, no, 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 it's less about you coming to the front here and it's more about whether or not you want to meet with God. God in his grace will meet with you, but I guarantee you there's more in store and on offer with him when you close your door and you spend time just you and him. Way more, way more on offer. This took me ages to learn. I feel like I used to think that somehow like churches owed me an encounter. Does anyone else feel like that? No, no, no hands up. <laughs> oh, wow, every hand. <laughs> uh, who loves Jesus? And no, 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 no. <laughs> And so we sort of think, um, I remember going to church and thinking, I'm not going to be able to receive tonight unless the pastor who's at the front points me out and says, there's a call of God on your life. You need to step out of the boat. Like I used to think like that, that, that would be a good night. Anything short of that's not a good night. That's not healthy mindset. That's not carrying my cross. What I've learned through a lot of suffering and devotion with Jesus is that actually the times where it's just me and God out on my front deck with a coffee in hand, just praying, crying over scriptures is, is better than anything else. It's denying myself. Sure, I'd rather, I'd rather sleep in most mornings, but there's something just amazing about getting up early in the morning before the sun rises. You know, I believe it's like a biblical thing that so many amazing people in the scriptures got up early before the sunrise because it's like quiet. It's just you and the Lord. I encourage you, if you haven't done that before, do it. it it's honestly, it, it'll change your life. It's beautiful. Just you and God and nothing else. And that is, I think, how you cultivate this, this sort of lifestyle of, of carrying a cross that is yours because God has given it to you because you've spent time with him and you know, Lord, even though this cross is heavy, it's my responsibility that you've given me and I'm willing to carry it with you leading from the front and I know that you'll help me carry that weight. You've got to seek the Lord and not other people's approval. Seek the Lord so you can carry your cross and no one else's. And when we carry our own cross, when we recognise that it's, it's our own, that Jesus has given us and that the weight is to be shared with Jesus, I think we move into a space is my final point where you recognize that the cross is for you to die on and like it's it's awfully quiet (laughs) we carry our cross following jesus to die to what he has actually given to us our responsibilities our calling our life all that stuff is great but the cross in which we carry a lifestyle devoted to jesus he wants us to be willing to die for it both spiritually and physically. We hear about martyrdom all the time in the, Bi- in the Bible. We hear about it in this day and age. Um, and it's tough. Like, I'm not going to stand here and be like, yeah, I'd easily be able to just, you know, die for Jesus if someone put a gun to my head. I don't know what I'd do. It'd be very scary. But he wants us to get to that place where we're just willing to go all out. It's the gospel message, isn't it? Yeah. What did Jesus do? Our God, our King, our Saviour, took himself into the form of a man, Jesus, who's eternal, by the way, was there from the beginning, will be there at the end, lived the perfect life, free of sin, free of sin. This man, like, the, the, it takes me 10 minutes, I reckon, in the day to have a, a negative thought. Jesus, that never happened. He would wake up and he'd just be fighting demons nonstop in his head, but he would have just been, you know what? God, I'm giving it to you. God, God. He, he would never allow temptation in continually repelling any form of temptation, any form of sin. Such was his power. He then died on a cross. Why did he die on a cross? Because it's representative of all the sin from all the ages. He took all of it on a cross and died so that three days later when he was resurrected, we could live in freedom. 
It's the, be- it's the greatest message. I can never get sick of talking about it. I'll never get sick of hearing about it. Our king suffered for us. Our king, who is worthy of all praise, who's in the room right now, who is ministering to our hearts, was actually willing to come down on earth so that we could be with him, was willing to die a a horrible death, was willing to be humiliated so that we could live in freedom. We've done nothing to earn that. Nothing. Absolutely nothing to earn that. And that's not me having shots of people saying you're not having a good, oh, you're not good enough, you're not doing, no, 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 no. It, we've got to recognize we've done nothing to earn the freedom that he's given us. And when we recognize that, it's a beautiful thing to then carry across. Because it's like, man, I take this responsibility, Lord, because you've done it all for me. Yeah. Hebrews 2.9 speaks beautifully on this when I get there. But we see him, Jesus, who for a little while was made lower than the angels, therefore he was was made a human, crowned with glory and honour because of the suffering of death. The glory and the honour came because he suffered. So that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. He did that for us. That's what it's saying. He tasted death. And through death received honour and resurrection. Like how beautiful is that? So mockery, pushback, people questioning why you're carrying your cross, it's expected. It is all part of the Christian journey. It is all part of us eventually receiving our crown with Jesus in eternity. When we carry our cross and die for his cause, not ours, we get to share in his glory. And what a beautiful thing that is. I don't know if you guys saw recently at the, um, yes, last night at the Olympic Games, the, the opening ceremony had uh, drag queens representing um, the, the Last Supper. Total mockery of the Christian faith. <laughs> That's the world we live in today. But our Saviour wore a crown of thorns. He was mocked. And so when we see that, our response shouldn't be to just plaster it all over our social media. Look at what's happening. What did Jesus do on the cross? Forgive them, Father, for they do not know what they do. We don't suddenly just hold them to a standard they're not recognizing. They don't know. We, f- we ask God, forgive them. May their hearts be turned. We as Christians can so easily get caught up in, look at what the world's doing. Look at how they're crushing us. Look at how they're oppressing us. And it's not denying that. I'm not denying that at all. But did you know that on the same day, 45 people got saved? 45 people at the Paris Olympics. I've, I've literally just saw it before. Ben, it was Ben Fitzgerald and his team, a pastor over in Germany. Literally just went around. 45 people got saved. Wow. Don't see many people sharing that. Don't see many Christians sharing that. Yeah. That's what we're meant to share, the gospel. Yeah. That inspired me. That became less about what they did to defi- defame the name of Jesus, and it became more about the power of the gospel. Yeah. What is that? That's a lifestyle where you're set on dying for Jesus. You're not set on pleasing the world. You're not set on pleasing your Instagram followers. You're set on pleasing Jesus. So I want to encourage you today that the world won't understand the cross that you carry. Your response, though, shouldn't be to hold them to a standard of Jesus. Your response should say, I forgive you. I'm going to keep moving towards Jesus and hope that they are impacted by the life that you live. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. Yeah. Ready to go? Let's land this plane. <laughs> 1 Corinthians 2 to 3. I'm waiting for those keys. <laughs> and I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling, says Paul. Before that, he says, When I came to you, brothers, do not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified Jesus Christ and him crucified and I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling Paul knew all that he needed to do when he was on the road and when he was ministering was to be built up by the knowledge that Jesus Christ lived was resurrected and was crucified and that that would be the power to propel him and that would be the only thing he needed to chase and he came with much fear and trembling or for God in trembling He recognised his ministry wasn't built upon him. His ministry was built upon a resurrected Saviour. And I praise God every day that our church is built on that. 
It's built on the fact that Jesus came, lived the perfect life, died and was resurrected. And that will forever be the foundation of this beautiful church. That will forever be the foundation of why we carry our cross. Because someone loved us, was willing to die for us on a cross so that we can be living in freedom. And that when we feel that weight, when we deny ourselves, when we carry our cross up that hill, when we start to feel like it's too much weight, we're not pushing it off. We're not blaming other people, but instead we're saying, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for this weight. Thank you, God, that I have to suffer through this. Thank you, God, that you know what's best for me. Because there comes that point in time where you can look back on, like I look back on that camp and I don't think about all the suffering and all the pain and all the tears and all the crying. I think of how those four kids' lives are changed forever because God decided to move in a moment. In hindsight, we recognise that the weight of the cross, it's glorious. Would we not want to walk in a lifestyle of someone who knows us better than ourselves? Would we not want to follow that? Christ and Christ crucified, that's the start of you carrying a cross. What a glorious honour. Can you stand for me today, guys? Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name, Lord. Hey, if you're in this space today and you have never, never given your life to Jesus or you know that, that you are so far from Him right now and you recognise that, that what we're talking about today of, 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 a, of a man that came down, fully man, fully God, lived the perfect life for you and for me to die on that cross, be resurrected so that we can live with Him eternally. If you've never ever accepted that, you're going to have an opportunity right now. So with every eye closed and head bowed, I'm going to give you a count of three. And if you want to hand your life over to Jesus, you recognize that there's sin and there's undealt with shame in your life that you need to hand over in this moment so that you can accept Him in your heart and live eternally with Him. On the count of three, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. One, two, three. Gonna wait a little bit longer. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're gonna pray this prayer together. And when you pray this prayer, it's accepting Jesus into your life, freeing you from the bondage of sin and shame, the things that cause us to miss the mark. Everybody say, Dear Jesus, I thank you that you love me. I thank you that you died for me. I thank you that you were resurrected for me. Today, Lord. I hand over my sin and freely receive the gift of eternal life. Thank you, Jesus. And all of God's people said, Amen, Amen. Gave a shout of praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, I just want to pray over you now. And, and, and as I was preparing for, for this message, I, I had three, three things on my heart that I wanted to pray for. First one is, uh, if there's people in here that feel the weight of the cross that they're carrying right now and they know that God has given it to them, but they're feeling like they're at, on a knife's edge, I want to pray that God comes in and helps ease that load and gives you the wisdom to be able to learn how to carry that cross with Him. The second thing I want to pray for is for people that are carrying the wrong cross and you know that maybe you've been doing things in life thinking that maybe it's, you know, you're thinking it's the right thing, but you know deep down in your heart it's not. And the third thing I want to pray for is for people that are just like, you know what, I'm ready to just deny myself and pick up my cross. <laughs> so with every eye closed, head bowed, if that's you, just raise your hands. Just raise your hands to heaven. Just, just lift it up to God. Thank you, Jesus. Man, I know I need it. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. God, I just pray right now, Lord, for every single person in this room, Lord. God, whether they are carrying a cross you have given them, Lord, whether they're carrying a cross that, that perhaps they know they've got to lay down, Jesus, I pray right now you come and minister to their hearts right now, God. God, come and sweep us up in your love, Lord. God, show us, Lord, that there is a greater way and that way is Jesus. Lord, centre us in right now onto your voice and onto your face. And God, I pray that the power of the cross, Lord, is the thing that drives us to carry what you have deposited in us, Lord. That the weight, when it starts to feel heavy, when it starts to feel like it's bearing down our neck, Lord, that we don't turn to the world, but we turn to Scripture. That we don't turn to other people's opinions, but we turn to your voice, God. And I pray 
pray, Jesus, for those that are holding a cross, Lord, that they want to lay down now because they know You're not in it. Lord, would You give them the courage to be able to be honest with themselves and with You, that there is a better cross and that's the cross that Jesus has given them. So Lord, I pray right now, You come and sweep through this church, Lord. Lord, we want to be forever changed by Your glory. God, I pray we realise that we've never actually made it until we're standing face to face with You in glory. So Lord, we honour You in this place. We say, come have Your way. And all God's people said, Amen. Hey, well, thanks so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video today. Like, subscribe and share if you think this content will be helpful for you or others. If you did give your life to Jesus today, please let us know. We would love to walk that journey with you. You can check us out at brightchurch.com and we look forward to seeing you either in person at a service or online. We hope to see you soon.